we're going to be converting our data from the spreadsheet into a JSON object that we're outputting within the web app in preparation to pick that information up as JSON data using front-end JavaScript code. So constructing and picking up the range, the data, the headings, and converting it into an object using Google Apps Script, and then lastly using the doGet method in order to output it as JSON data. So that's all coming up in this lesson. Open up your Google Apps Script where we've got the code that we're outputting and we're going to update this to output the contents from the spreadsheet. So we're already generating it using the function output data. So we run output data. That's going to get all of the content within an array format. So we want to actually set this up and output it back as within an object format. So that way we can a lot easier output it to the page. So we've got the data object. Let's separate out and get the headers from the top first row of data that we've got. So that's first, last, status, on ID. And we'll transform those using them as headers. So we can call them headings. And selecting that value from that's going to be contained within a data zero. And for now, let's output that into the log. And we'll continue to update this function until we've got it within an object format instead of having it within an array format. So run the output data. So that gives us all of the headings. We want them all to be consistent and lower case. So in this case, we can use map. And what map method does, it's an array method that provides us a callback and allows us to update the data from the array. So using the map method, and we can get the value within val. And there's also index value that you can also get. So if we were to log out all of the values, and we can run that. So it's going to log out all of the values. In order to return the values, we have to do a return. So we can return back the value and also log them out. So that logs out all of the and creates that same array list. So we want to actually update these values and turn it to a string to lowercase. So we need to transform it using the string method. So that will convert it into a string format. And the string alone, it's not going to make any difference right now within the output because they're already within a string format. But we want to use the string methods. And once we've turned it into a string data type, then we have an option to use the to lowercase. So this will give us an option to convert all of these string values into a lowercase array. So basically what we're doing is we're updating that array and we're transforming the headings into a lowercase format. So next up, we want to get all of the data. So I'm going to actually rename this and call this rows. And this will reference all of the entire data object, but we're going to use slice to slice out that first row away because we, we've already used it within the headings. And that format is now going to be taking that first row as headings and using them as the property names within the object. So let's make sure that we've got the rows. So starting at this is going to be the first row of data. So basically, we just sliced out that first part of the content. So now we can create a function that's going to convert. So it's going to convert objects. So it's going to convert the array into an object format. So this is going to require two parameters. And the first one is going to be the data or the rows. So we'll keep it consistent with what we've got them named within the first function. And then the second one is going to be using the headings. And this will return back all of the headings that we can use as property names. So what we want to do is we want to, we'll use the log for now, and we'll output the data, the temp data, as we're constructing our object. So first for temp, uh, let's create temp and create it as an object. And for now, we'll do the rows and using map again we can get each one of those values and then convert it. So for now, we'll just return back the value within the map. 
and let's uh, run the function here where we've got the rows and headings that we're passing into the cov objects function. And then this will return back a value from the temp. And we actually don't need to log it out here because we've already logging it out within this statement. So let's just save that and we'll run it. We'll see what we get back. So now we're getting that same data just returned back. We're passing in the rows and then we're using map to iterate through the rows of content. So what we want to do is want to construct an object and this is going to be our main container object that we can use and I'll just call it container. So set it up as a blank object. And then as we loop through the rows, we want to also iterate through all four rows. And this is where we can use the headings. And for each one of the headings, we can get the heading value and construct our object within the container object. And actually, I'm going to just rename this to my object, as this is where we're going to be setting the object into. So take the my object and use the heading value as the property name. So this is taking the heading value. And then we're assigning it to whatever the value is from val. And this is actually going to be the row of content. So let's rename it to row. So whatever the row and then the index value that we've got as we're looping through the rows. So selecting it and we'll return back the index value here within this. And let's uh, move the object inside here and then we can return back the object and save it. So instead of having it as, as we loop through the rows of the array, we're going to be rebuilding them and setting them up as objects. So then the temp array is actually going to be the object that we're returning within an object format. So let's see what this looks like when we run it and we execute it. So we've got the last name for the first row, starting with Svekis2, and then first name should be Lawrence. ID is 1, status is true. And this is all comma separated, so they're all objects that are contained within the array. And instead of having them as nested arrays, now we've converted them into objects. So this is a more usable format when we're making use of it within the web page. So we're turning it back and we're basically converting the sheet data instead of having it output as arrays using the first row as an object property name and then the values of each one of those cells is going to be the property value in that row. So we're actually ready to output it back to the web page where we can return it back to the web page. And I'm going to comment out the do get and we'll work a little bit more later on with the different ways to output the data. Uh, so for now, we'll create another function and call that do get as well. And this time we're going to be returning back the contents as a JSON object. So picking up the event object and then within the do get, we're going to construct the output that we want to use and using the JSON stringify as we're going to be returning back an object. And let's set up the object that we want to return. So we'll have a status value. So this can be status success. And then the data that we're returning back within the object, this is going to be coming from the output data. So let's uh, add that in, output data. And this will simply, instead of logging it out, it will return what we were initially logging out as a value that we can then pass through and output into the web app. So let's uh, finalize the web app and then we'll try it out. And this time we can use the content service. We're going to create text output and the output is coming. The output is going to be the, basically the stringified version of the output data and then also an object value of success. And let's set the meme type 
for the content service and the meme type that we want to return back is going to be within a JSON format. I think we're ready to try that out and let's go over to the web page to the dev side and we'll see what we get returned back. So we're getting it back with uh, JSON formatted data. So let's uh, launch it into the new deployment. And again, as the web app, JSON sheet data. So it looks like uh, we're ready to deploy it as JSON sheet data. So that's our URL where we've got it output. And the URLs there, they do change when you redeploy it. So that initial executable URL now is different. So just uh, make note of that when you do copy it, that it's not going to be the same original web app URL. Uh, the ID has now changed because we've redeployed it. Uh, so make sure that when we do have that deployment ID value that we can are outputting it the same as the development. And this is within a JSON format. So that means that we're ready to pick it up from the client side and we're going to be creating the JavaScript connection to it in the upcoming lesson. So make sure that you are able to deploy it and your web app is outputting in a JSON format and you can be ready to move on to the next lesson. So again, this content is coming dynamically from the spreadsheet. We're constructing it into an object format and then we're outputting it into the web page, web app as JSON content. And that's ready for setting up our endpoint to be retrieve that data using an Ajax request from front end code.